<laughs> well, first of all, uh, thank you very much for coming and welcome. We're very excited to have Trophy Launch back and also we'll have it back in person um, because like, this is a very nice space uh, for the TCD community. And we're also very happy to open this fall series with an alumni of TCD, which is Dr. Ronit Amit. So uh, Ronit uh, has a PhD from here at the Human Dimensions of Wildlife Lab um, in the Wildlife Ecology and Conservation here at the University of Florida. And she worked under the supervision of Dr. Susan Jacobson. And now that she's a professor of several classes in the University of Costa Rica, she's also involved in working uh, with, NGO, with an NGO called People and Fauna. Um, and it's also part of the IUCN Human Wildlife uh, Group and Coexistence. Uh, so she does a lot of things and now she will tell you us a little bit about it. So as uh, we have like done it, we have 45 minutes for the talk and then we'll have like 15 minutes for questions and answers from our online and in-person audience. So welcome, Ronnie. We're very happy to have you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> really, this is a meeting. And uh, yes, I I do not uh, practice my timing, so uh, you can tell me if so okay. before, like, no, but no. <laughs> for having questions, that is important. Um, well, I'm going to share a particular project that I have been working in. in this year it started, and it still has uh, one more year to go, um, that it is called this way, from national contest to national network in front of Billings. So that's a, an initiative that has a, several partners. It is based in the University of Costa Rica, specifically, specifically the Center for Research on Tropical Biodiversity and Ecology. And uh, the main founding I'm going to mention soon for you to think also about your own funding search. Then a little bit about my country. It is very small for some of you maybe uh, be lost in this. Uh, it, I, I cannot pronounce the, the word, the, the bridge that connects North America and South America. Um, so this small country is blessed with a huge amount of biodiversity because several issues make it very special. Uh, the closed oceans, the mountain ranges dividing everything. So we have every corner <laughs> is completely different. We have so many environments and you can go from coast to coast, north and south, and you would never finish getting to know the place. I am trying, but Yes, I still have so many places to know from my own country. Um, in here, this was um, a study that has already many years, it's uh, 2014-15, and um, it was a first approach to, to check in uh, camera traps around the country from different people, different researchers. And in this case, this is the, the map uh, pointing at the red locations where jaguars were found in the camera traps. So jaguars are all around, uh, which is not that recognized still by, by many people inside, because everyone thinks they live in the Osa Peninsula, that it is very famous for the research done on um, jaguars. But now we know they are in several places, even very close to cities, to, uh, ranches and many, many places. And uh, I will not show other species, but pumas are even close to the central valley, like 20 minutes for, for uh, at a distance of 20 minutes from the university. So um, when we assess human feelings, we have six species, actually, white cats. Um, those interactions are just very, very close and uh, it's getting more and more common to have them uh, in, in a particular year. And many conditions are providing more, more opportunities for the good interactions and also some bad interactions. 
um, about threats for these six species that I'm going to mention because I forgot to put a slide on this. Uh, we have the jaguar, we have the puma, those are the, the biggest ones. Uh, also, we have um, the ocelot, the um, jaguarundi, that is a relative of the puma. Uh, other spotted small cats are the, the margay and the um, leopardus tigrinus, the oncilla. So those six, uh, mostly they share some of the threats. Um, road kills is getting into one of the biggest concerns. The roads we have are not well planned and these animals need to move from their original areas and uh, that is a, a common threat. Um, retaliation killing for these carnivores getting into the depredation of domestic animals so people getting angry with it poison or a, even hiring compounds a, a, a person to illegally kill this protected species. They are protected by law. Uh, habitat fragmentation also related to roads and other infrastructure that is going on what we tend to call development. Um, and a, a thing about Costa Rica is that legislation is amazing. It's very, very good, but um, just in the paper. So when we, <laughs> yeah, I know many, many countries may relate to that. Um, when we have these, these uh, threats in action, when something illegal is going on, in general, it's so hard to make the, the law to, to do what it is supposed to do. So it's very sad. Um, and the, the political environment is getting complicated recently. So it's, again, something that is happening everywhere. And the, yes, our Ministry of Environment is underfunded and the panorama going ahead is, is bad. Uh, so my work, uh, I tend to summarize as uh, working in community-based incentives. That word incentives uh, also may be controversial because uh, I am talking about tools that motivate some kind of behavior that we want or that we want to stop. Um, so it is not just about money that some people, when you say incentives, they go, oh, there's money involved. Well, not truly and completely. It is about money, but benefits also, it's more about um, welfare promotion instead of just uh, receiving a monetary compensation or something like that. So um, these three papers are my babies produced uh, after my PhD, or during my, the end of my PhD work in, in Florida. So uh, some people here even have some of those ideas and uh, it is so nice. It feels so nice to be here at home. Um, and of course, methods and theories and everything I learned from the, the courses of many professors of CCD. Um, it has been just a, amazing how applicable everything is. And so, what I did here after studying mostly the ecological perspective previous to my PhD, uh, it was to get into the human dimensions. Uh, getting into the shoes of uh, the species, who are they, what are their characteristics, getting to know uh, what barriers and benefits were associated with this um, common ground that is prevention of any kind of negative conflict. In this case, we were protecting livestock. Um, and then uh, even traveled around the country to get a typology of ranchers based on their. Uh, what systems, attitudes, perceptions, and emotions even. Um, and the last paper it was a huge uh, challenge because it has a really complex participatory methodology that took a little bit of different techniques and different um, theoretical background. So I could get the uh, feedback from local people. They set the, the agenda at the beginning and uh, get experts from several disciplines, different uh, institutions also. Everyone 
um, providing feedback to design these kind of tools in samples. Um, so we go to, to design six different types of, of incentives and uh, everything was still in the paper even when this community that participated it was seven communities that were involved in, in the validation of everything. Um, so they were still waiting, well, what is going on after this dissertation? So pilot testing. Uh, after I graduated, came back to Costa Rica, uh, got funding uh, still from the US Fish and Wildlife Service for the pilot test in 2017. And uh, for those, the sad part is that I still do not have a uh, scientific papers, but I have the technical reports in Spanish. So sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, well, I, I was testing three of the incentives that it was a payment for coexistence. I'm going to just mention them because it's too complex. About this. Um, the citizen technical assistance for prevention of damage and a, a green label for products and services of these communities that coexist with the cats. And um, well, that, that study uh, went a little short, but it was the first time we actually had something to provide to the local communities and uh, there were um, four communities involved from different parts of the country. Next, uh, we had to do a second pilot test this time, the funding was from the uh, first depth, so depth, swap depth, depth for swap. Depth for nature. Yeah, depth for nature with Costa Rica and the United States. Um, and that one got into the So it, it, we started like, like four months with the methodology that it, it was so, so nicely designed that I, I thought. <laughs> but uh, with the pandemic, we had to improvise everything and change everything. It was very, very challenging, but we decided that this is not going to stop. So let's go and change and, and make people um, happy during, during that, that time. So the, the initial methodology, well, I will uh, mention also briefly, it was very, very social learning. It was a lot of workshops with everyone, like parties for all the activities with the food and music and everything. Suddenly everyone to do their home. So you work here, you work here, you work here. So teamwork was one of the worst expectations we had for the state. And now we have the next stage after that test. That is, I'm not going to repeat this test so many more times for one community at the time. How can I like this and get more people, more communities involved. So what idea is next? Uh, this one is a slide I, I wanted to briefly mention about content search that you be really provided uh, about it. Uh, so get into content search however you can. There are so many online classes in here. You have uh, courses, there are books, even those books for dummies, <laughs> and uh, look for how it is done. It is done with a lot of tricks. It's very interesting as a, a communication strategy of how you convince someone that has money outside of uh, your surrounding, and this person or institution wants to give this money to you. So how you convince this person that you're the right one to receive it and that you got the project is very uh, worthy. So um, it is just a matter of practice and try to make as many applications for, for grants and small, mid, great ones, a uh, really big grant and they may say no, but one day, they, yes. <laughs> and yes, I have done so many throughout my life and uh, got a uh, very fortunate to, to receive, to be honored by them because they are really saying, oh, good, you decide this. And sometimes even those grants, um, you uh, have trouble, issues, whatever, but always there's a learning and, and donors are also learning. So 
explore that. It's just a, a big, big work. And uh, the issue with this kind of projects is that usually the budgets increase and increase forever. And that is not sustainable. <laughs> so um, for, for the, the previous pilot tests, is this these budgets and the current project is extremely, extremely expensive. And I'm very happy to have a, the UK government as donor for the first time, and they are the best. It's just amazing how they um, get into helping you with the, the design, even and how they evaluate that not every donor say something. And in this case, it's a donor that gives very valuable feedback. It was never before I could touch back. Um, and still, of course, I owe them a lot of work. This is from the, the, the pilot test during the pandemic. That was the development, not for, for many of the incentives. This was specifically for the green label called Amigos de Felinos, Friends of Feet. Um, so the, the scheme is the overall design of what the tool is, just not to confuse it with what the green label is that has the same name, Amigos de Felinos. <laughs> so, the label is the, the logo that you can see and recognize the products, and it has the identity and has the, the marketing value, the branding value. But uh, the actual scheme is what is going on behind that uh, identity. And um, there's also our association, Amigos de Felinos. That is the, the group that I will introduce to you, the existing group that uh, was the result of this, of this project. So it's the local people organized. Um, so the process of the scheme starts always with a diagnosis because every single thing is different, how they uh, organize and how they would like things. So it's uh, having a, an exploration the ecological part, of course, getting to know the landscape and what is going on around the, 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 the general biodiversity, uh, the, the weather conditions, the soils and the forest. And a little bit of everything from that ecological perspective and the social part, how these uh, people have lived in this area, uh, what is their social organization, are there institutions around providing something or are they abandoned or what is the level of education and, and the gender issues, uh, equity, general issues. Um, so a lot of diagnosis, but of course it has to be with uh, the rapid tools. For uh, the adaptation phase would be really a negotiation between the local people and the proposal we have for them. So um, every time we can propose something very, very nice, but they would say those are not our needs. So what, how can we uh, adapt the project without losing the, the real uh, objectives at uh, the, the very foundations, but also trying to satisfy them, what the necessities of these particular things are. Um, and then getting into a development phase that uh, requires a lot of um, capacity building. And we try to design those um, sessions like um, hands-on learning, so let's go and train on different subjects. Uh, and of course, learning ourselves from the local people. Um, I, I will get back to that one. And the independence, uh, phase is very, very tough because the idea is always that we will be temporary visitors of these communities and they have to really make the project their own for a continuing and rich sustainability. So that part is very, very difficult, but it was in the pilot test. What we design as the most important uh, 
part, the key part of the whole scheme is the link between wildlife monitoring and the evidence of this uh, species to really be there around these towns. That link with local production. So the the little thing that they could create that I have a um, an exhibition back there when we finish you can check out all the beautiful things that these ladies because most of uh, these people are, are ladies. Um, so uh, it is not just sit, learn a, learn a technique, produce and sell something and make some money, but why are you doing it? So you are receiving the benefits because you have the evidence of this cat and other species around. So uh, in this adaptation phase uh, that I mentioned, the local people like you in a meeting, well, at Nasir put on with all <laughs> very participatory fun techniques, um, put uh, raise their hand and say, I want to be part of the uh, wildlife monitoring team. I want to be part of the entrepreneurship team or both. Or uh, I, I am not uh, that skillful. I want to just be part, but maybe just uh, helping in general stuff. So many options for a local person to, to decide what to do. And of course, voluntarily, so some people can say, no, no, I'm going to go away. Or return later that everything happened. It's amazing how, how these participants have varied with time, some come and go, and yes, it's unbelievable, all the, the dynamics of participation, but actually, so there's. Um, so the training on wildlife monitoring, a lot of fun, getting very dirty. Local people knows knows a lot about their, their terrain. The camera traps are located around 500 meters. I don't know in charts. I don't know how to translate 500 meters. It's really close to their the the interface between protected areas and the private areas. Um, the protected areas are mostly public. And uh, in this case, it's a, a national park that the neighbor of this side of the means northwestern Costa Rica. I didn't point out even now. Um, but uh, so the, the, the records, I, I got one uh, a couple of days ago, uh, a new record of a uh, jaguar that lives 100 meters away, so from here, <laughs> of uh, one of the churches of the town. What other lives close to or passing by? Um, the the high school. So the that part of discovering how how close are these interactions is also something uh, very very interesting. And the the group that uh, has been receiving the training on entrepreneurship, it's the products, but also the service and local services received, um, like a, a sign for them to having the in their uh, little shop or the restaurants or the souvenir stores, things like, like that. Um, so a lot of things going on on what the scheme is, but always the evidence uh, has to be there. And we, I, I think, have a lot of data to support that we did good this part. Even when still uh, we are not making too much money to say, oh, this is going to be great for every family, they can quit their job, just do this. Um, but they they always, in, in how they express themselves, like, oh, do it for the cats too. Uh, and, and also because they enjoy what they are doing. So they are, Amazing, they are uh, extremely creative. And <laughs> that is my model there. Um, so uh, every uh, entrepreneur makes its own stuff with different material. They have explored a lot uh, at the beginning with our guidance, but later they every visit we make, they surprise us with something new. And these uh, people, they never thought so uh, in, in the first visits we made, we, we challenged them and, and they were so so adorable bringing their, their small stuff that they did 
or, or showing that they could actually be, to do something with their with their hands. And now uh, they when they explain to you, we a year ago, a couple of years ago, we didn't uh, manage any of these rules or colors or forms of the animals. And and you, you can notice how proud they are uh, about their newest year. So that is very, very special. And uh, so we for the new the new stage while we have this association the local association is still struggling with how to be leaders and how to uh, have a system that is community based when they usually went just uh, working by themselves and not sharing the benefits or having a group feeling a group identity so um, that that is still like like a baby, I say it's, it's my baby. The president of the association, she always says to me that that, that I should not pick on them uh, because I'm, I'm the mother. So they expect always to be the baby. I said, no, no, no. You have other time to grow up and continue your family. <laughs> um, so that part, of the independence part, it's amazing and difficult, but. Uh, we are learning, learning, and learning. This new project, so it's a uh, focus on, on, on these three points. Uh, first, uh, highlight to everyone that we, in this particular case of the cats, uh, the big cats uh, causing damage to some livelihoods and conservation in general, having a negative impact on local people. It for some people is very hard to understand that uh, that if we are not providing the benefits, local people is never going to be an ally of conservation. Uh, ally. Yeah. Um, so these kind of tools need to really reward people, to really recognize that they are making an effort. Do not ignore they are making an effort for those uh, people in the Ministry of Environment or the general population that gets very angry when someone kill, kills a, a, a jaguar in some social network there go, oh, people are so bad and stupid. Well, they're not. There are people that have a livelihood to, to keep up. Um, so, benefits. And the protagonism of those local communities. I cannot be in a building you protect my biodiversity. I love biodiversity because I go camping once every five years. <laughs> you protect my biodiversity. It is not like that. So um, if even the authorities, they are so restricted on how to protect everything, they uh, even sometimes do not have a car, do not have fuel, so they don't go to see any the, Call for help and uh, the academia. We also are doing a lot of stuff. Maybe we cannot go and help. Uh, so they are the ones in the place and uh, organizing and providing the tools and providing uh, enough uh, freedom for them also to, to get into really uh, community based uh, wildlife management. Uh, that is uh, one of the, the key to stuff to, to design inside this. And it uh, is scaling up. So yes, I can work in one, two, maybe three communities. It's going to be very expensive and it will always depend on the uh, external people. But that urgent call um, really needs a lot of creativity. So I would like both breaking my, my head about that. I remember, okay, I liked a lot what I learned about the <laughs> community based social marketing and things like that. What are the options in this, in these sources? So I came up with that slogan make your, your business and the business of your community participate in the natural friends of feelings. Uh, we will. Uh, award 
the communities that use good practices to coexist with, with wild cats and information here. And uh, the credibility of all the logos of the, of the people. And well, we had many participants. <laughs> That was scary not to get participants. We have a communication team, so we all build this, this communication strategy based on the benefits and make the business grow. The community has to grow because a business is going to be benefit. So uh, we uh, recorded a lot of the communications for assessing that is part of the qualitative analysis we are getting into. And these communities, I do not have in a map, but, but really are all dispersed. And we can see um, where some of the main conflict hotspots are. But also, we have several previously identified conflict hotspots that did not participate. So, still, that is also part of the analysis because we will have a second year of the conflict. So, this is the first. And one really important part of the whole process and how it is designed is that it is not only about the winning communities, but also the process itself. So every single participant and even people that couldn't participate because they learned delayed about this maybe or they check it out and said, oh, we don't have time or many reasons. Uh, but the idea was they have to self-assess for the first time probably ever, how is that wildlife governance? So maybe they never thought, oh, we are having interactions, let's ask my neighbors what is going on. So we made this, this form, uh, and this form itself is very tricky. It, it, it is, is hard for some of these communities that may not have really good access to technology or the internet or with, um, I don't know, even limited uh, reading skills. So that form required <laughs> assistance and help. We got a call center by our graduate assistant. And um, we have all the recordings and all the texts, and a, lot, a lot of content for analyzing. And, and it was very close, the, the follow-up, once the first uh, contact, one of these communities was made, then we tried not to harass people, <laughs> no. but, but follow up, oh, how are you doing with the farm? Uh, did you have any participation? Remember to do this. Um, and um, also, we were uh, highlighting a lot about the, the evidence that people could provide and how that can be very tricky because of the ethics concern, also how the evidence is managed and some sensitive evidence and things like that. Uh, other evidence that we have that now I realize that in our TV presentation is the, the pre test and post test of all this. Uh, because part of the form it was like, please circulate this, this online survey people and, and help them if they cannot uh, use it to speed this up. Based um, survey on the model of wildlife, wildlife acceptance capacity that I like a lot and I have used previously. So it's that and also some theory of plant behavior for some students. Uh, so we, we have like, the, I'm not sure, like 300 or more surveys for, for assessing. And these are the, the components of the form, the general the components that we are valuing from these communities. So the ecological value that uh, a lot is a landscape ecology, where is the community located and how forested it is and how close of the biological corridors, national parks it is. Uh, the potential for entrepreneurship, it was also part of the information. Uh, the capacity for local organizations, so a little bit about the explaining to us how to make local decisions, uh, threats to the wildlife, and the good practices that had the most value 
the farm. The farm it was very a lot of thought that we invested on designing it uh, and the, the rubric for evaluating. It was also a lot of, of work. We have for evaluation uh, a jury panel of um, several experts. Uh, I think it's 24 different people helping us, different um, expertise, different institutions and some international people for, for the second round, it was two rounds of the, these evaluations. Um, and we tried by uh, with this uh, to reduce any biases that the researchers designing all we can have. And also, uh, yes, those external eyes are always going to, to provide insights that we may miss. And let me see. So the process is about uh, the feedback that people give to us, but also the one that we give to them. And that is that the, the very important uh, idea of the field inspections. So the first time when people apply, they send the form, we evaluate, we select the finalists. So we had. 15 finalists in, in two, two categories. One category is the, um, the model communities, the very um, exemplary uh, local groups that are making already a difference, maybe not that focused on, on the cats, but on biodiversity. They, they are already doing a lot. So that's the category number two and the theory number one is um, the cases where actually nothing has been done so they are in need they are the ones that desire some accompaniment <laughs> some uh, support for being able to become a friend of the field so we have like the models and the ones that we need the help to yet to be in models. Um, so during field inspections, we evaluated differently both uh, categories. And the, the field inspections were to, to check all the, the components of the, the form and to have for the first time with them this uh, participatory methods. Some meetings were big, some meetings were uh, very small, but it was again with a little pieces of paper, put your ideas, and uh, with this uh, huge uh, paper, <laughs> the, the ideas, well, everyone really involved in improving the previous form. So after our visit, uh, that we took a lot of pictures of all the evidence that we could, uh, we made a report for the judges, and um, the, the local people uh, revised their, their application. And the, the prices, they are competing for that accompaniment, all the scheme, all the training and, and, and getting into the different the, the teams for local working. And the, the camera traps, of course, and computers and hard rights and um, some cash money for investment in the local entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. And even an artist uh, don donated a surprise a huge mural and his so <laughs> the price is getting more and more attractive. Uh, in the second edition of the contest, was contest, I expect uh, we will learn a lot from this first version. And uh, yeah, we have to analyze the data to see how the messaging can be directed. To the people that needed the most at this time, they did not apply. And recognition is what we are promising to these people with the label that uh, it is going to be the whole country in clapping for them and say, Well done, good job. And of course, uh, sharing the costs and the, the benefits of coexisting with these species. So we are making very easy to help them buy some stuff <laughs> from the local community, visit them, 
share their, their um, social media, so many things that you can do for recognize the local people. Some of the, of the messages on Facebook, um, um, just, just when someone says, oh, so nice what you're doing, I, I take a, a screenshot of that and share with, with local people. Oh, they, they are so happy just to, to receive good, good messages. Um, yes, so we really want to, to do the awarding ceremony focus on local people. It is going to be at the 29th of this month and it's going to be online also. If you want to join us online um, with the, the Vice Minister of Environment and the Ambassador from the UK and the President of the University. So we will make a big party for, for them and, and deliver the, the prizes. And so, uh, Hope to have a, a lot of press coverage as well. Let me see. I'm running out of time. So I do dream with community-based wildlife in management and getting to sustainability. Still a long way to go because um, our weakest point is that part of commercialization, getting a the, the movement of these products into the market and uh, setting also the services to, to really tell the story and get uh, more publicity. And um, we are working on that as part of the, of the project. But of course, you're very welcome to visit one day and uh, help us there on the field and uh, get more ideas. I love to work with volunteers and fellows uh, and visitors. So uh, any research questions also for, for to be done for, from different perspectives. And uh, yes, getting into this one is so tricky. I, I wish <laughs> it, it was not that bad, but, but I feel uh, in general, this, these communities have lost so much power. They do not believe in themselves. Um, always, I try to, to highlight who, who can do it, but it's, it's hard when they have these other voices they know. And yes, they can. So it's, it's just something to, to go on and on. Same as inclusion, so much stronger for, for uh, women, of course, um, young people and old people, the streams, always they cannot. Be as, as taking into account as they should in these community structures, um, migrants, everything around. And let me say, I take away. <laughs> so I was thinking on um, closure that we need to balance what our role is as facilitators or agents of change, uh, but also have that that local leaders and their leadership uh, into account and uh, the design of the exit is so important and, and yeah we, we can have it on a plan but really seeing it really working is is I guess something that we should strive for really get into that and I'm happy to say that yesterday we picked the two winner communities, but it's a secret no one. The, the, the online, online people should not share. You know, the one <laughs> communities are. Um, well, if I mention the, the names, it's not very important. But the uh, one is uh, mixed the uh, peasant is the way the, the, the word peasant and indigenous communities. So it's like a mestizo and indigenous uh, town. And uh, that's that's really interesting. Um, and the other we have it's a wetland area. One is a mountainous area. The other is a wetland area. And uh, yes, showers are there. They are under threat. We can do a lot for improving how they are. And the people uh, they have different organizational systems, but they are very enthusiastic. And let's see, those will be our new amigos de Pilones. Thank <laughs> you.